Hello everyone. I am Saumitra Kumar. Today I am here with a new video for you that is based on population composition. Population composition is a distinct field of geography that includes the study of sex ratio, age structure, literacy, rural urban composition and occupational structure. First of all, the sex composition. The number of women and men in any country is an important demographic characteristic. The ratio between number of males and females is called as sex ratio or the sex composition. It is also called as gender ratio or the male-female ratio. In some countries, it is calculated as male population divided by female population multiplied by 1000 or the number of males per thousand females. But in case of India, the sex ratio is calculated as female population divided by male population multiplied by 1000 or the number of females per thousand males. The sex ratio is an important information about the status of women in any country. In regions where gender discrimination is rampant, the sex ratio is bound to be unfavorable to women. Such areas are those where the practice of female feticide, female infanticide and domestic violence against women are prevalent. One of the reason could be lower socio-economic status of women in these areas. You must remember that unfavorable sex ratio for women means where the proportion of females is lower than male population in the population. Now, natural advantage versus social disadvantage. Females have a biological advantage over males as they tend to be more resilient than males. Yet this advantage is cancelled out by the social disadvantages and discrimination that they face. That means nature made the females strong enough to deal with shock, illness or any kind of change. This is a natural advantage provided by nature. But this advantage is cancelled out by the social discrimination that the females face in any society. Reasons for unfavorable sex ratio for females Female feticide, female infanticide, strong desire for male child, domestic violence, lower social status of females. Now, sex ratio and comparisons. World population reflects a sex ratio of 100 true males per 100 females. Latvia has highest sex ratio, that is, 85 males per 100 females. Qatar has lowest sex ratio, that is, 311 males per 100 females. According to UN reports, about 139 countries have favorable sex ratio for females and in 72 countries, it is unfavorable for females. Age structure represents the number of people of different age groups. This is an important indicator of population composition since a large size of population in the age group of 15 to 59 indicates a large working population. A greater proportion of population above 60 years represents an aging population which requires more expenditure on health care facilities. Similarly, high proportion of young population would mean that the region has 
a high birth rate and the population is youthful. Now, the A-sex pyramid. The A-sex structure of a population refers to the number of females and males in different age groups. A population pyramid is used to show the A-sex structure of the population. The shape of the population pyramid reflects the characteristics of the population. The left side shows the percentage of males while the right side shows the percentage of women. In next slides, you will see the examples of population pyramids of different countries. This is a pyramid of expanding population. As you can see, this pyramid is of triangular shape. This pyramid is drawn for developing countries where birth rate is high and high proportion of population is found in lower age groups. This pyramid is drawn for Nigeria, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Brazil or all the other developing countries where birth rates are very high. As you can see, in this pyramid, proportion of population reduces in higher age groups. So, this pyramid takes a triangular shape. In this pyramid, as you can see, age group years are shown on vertical lines or on y-axis and their proportion or percentage are shown on x-axis or the horizontal lines. This pyramid is for constant population. Australia's population pyramid is bell-shaped. This pyramid is tapered towards the top ending. This pyramid is drawn for the countries where both the birth and death rates are almost equal. And this pyramid shows a stagnant or constant population. This can be drawn for all the countries where birth and death rates are equal and the population is constant. In this pyramid, high proportion of population can be observed in working age group and 60 plus age group. This is the pyramid for declining population. Population pyramid of Japan has narrow base and tapered top ending. This pyramid is drawn for the countries where both the birth and death rates are very low and the absolute growth in population is very low or even zero. This is the phenomena of most of the developed countries. Aging population. Population aging is the process by which the share of the older population becomes proportionally larger. This is a new phenomenon of the 20th century. In most of the developed countries of the world, population in higher age groups has increased due to increased life expectancy. With a reduction in birth rates, the proportion of children in the population has declined. Rural-Urban Composition Division of rural and urban is based on residence. Population characteristics like sex ratio, literacy, growth rate, occupational structure, etc. in developing countries differ from than that of in developed countries. Literacy 
literacy is an important indicator of socio-economic development as it reveals the standard of living, social status of females, availability of educational facility and the government policies. Literacy rate denotes the proportion of people above 7 years age who are able to read and write and have ability to do simple arithmetic calculations with understanding. Here it is important that literacy is both the cause and consequence of economic development. Occupational structure The working population, that is, women and men of the age group 15 to 59, take part in various occupations ranging from agriculture, forestry, fishing, manufacturing, construction, commercial transport services, communication, and other unclassified services. Population engaged in these sectors is a good indicator of the levels of economic development of a nation. This is because only a developed country with industries and infrastructure can accommodate more workers in the secondary, tertiary and quaternary sector. If the economy is still in primitive stages, then the proportion of people engaged in primary activities would be high. Thank you. Thank you everyone. You can ask your doubts and queries in comment section.